It's another day, another coffee, and today I've got a video for you beginners out there that are looking to improve your renders in Blender. I'm going to show you how you can take your renders from looking dark and gloomy like this to something a bit more like this. But if you're new around here, my name is Keelan and let's get on with the video. Okay, so here we are, we're back in Blender, and by the way, this is Bob. Bob, the, uh, the delivery guy, he's going to be our model for today. And before we begin, just remember, these are some of my tips for how I achieve my desired results. And I recommend you take this information and then go away and experiment to find something that you really like and looks good with what you're looking to achieve. So tip number one is lighting. Wiseman once said lighting is key and do you know why? Because he was right. Lighting is the difference between your scene looking all dark and gloomy like this one and looking all nice, bright and vibrant. So to get started and to start practicing with your lighting setups, I'd recommend doing a nice basic three point lighting setup. You would have seen these in some of my other tutorials because I think they're really easy to follow along with and easy to understand as a beginner. So to start, I'm gonna take the default light and initially I'm just gonna bring this a little bit closer to Bob, the delivery guy, just to add more light to the one side here. And then perhaps let's increase the brightness on this until we get something that we're generally happy with. And I do want it to look quite blown out initially because I wanted to create a lot of shadow over here and I want this to act as a nice bright highlight initially. You generally call this your key light. So let's round this off to 70. And then all I'm gonna do from there is to, with, with this light selected, shifty, bring this over to you know his side over here a little bit. And the idea is just to add in an additional light which is gonna be our fill light. The idea of a fill light is that it's gonna go ahead and add a bit more light to the shadows that are being created by the key light. Or I'm also gonna go ahead and reduce the power on this light because I don't want it to brighten it too much, just a little bit so the shadows aren't quite as harsh. Maybe around the 35 mark, something like that. And while you're going along, just remember the distance that you place your light from your character or from your object in general will also impact how it looks. Okay, and then lastly, we need the backlight. So I'm gonna do Shift D and duplicate this light once again to get our third light. And the backlight is generally gonna add some nice highlights to the character. So you want it to be quite bright. So I'm just gonna bring this right up maybe till you can see this nice bright highlight starting to appear on the character and make sure you are jumping into your camera view from time to time, just so you know how this is gonna look in your final render. So something like that I think looks pretty cool. We're already getting a bit, bit more of a nicer look here, so I think I'm gonna stick with that for now. But just so you are aware, you can also go ahead and adjust the general radius of your lights too, to change how harsh or how bright they are and how spread out the light is. For now, I'm just gonna leave this on 0.25 as the default. Okay, and I think that's gonna do for the initial lighting setup. Now, speaking of lighting, we're gonna move on to tip number two. So if you're like me and you like things when they're simple, I'd recommend trying some high dynamic range images or otherwise known as HDRIs. These are basically high resolution images that you can load into Blender to simulate real world lighting in an instant. So initially you'll need to download a HDRI, but good news, you can get them completely free from awesome sites such as HDRI Haven. I've left a link in the description below so you can head over there to download one. So once you've gone ahead and downloaded a HDRI, all we need to do is to jump into our shading tab up the top up here. And from there, in our little node section here, just make sure that the drop down is on the world option, so we're affecting the world, and make sure you have the use nodes option ticked here, and then you should see this background and this world output node already in here. All we need to do from here is to do shift A, and then search for an environment texture here, click that, drop that in there, and then in the file, click open. And what we need to do now is to find the HDRI that you have downloaded. I have a file here conveniently called HDRIs and I'm gonna use Veranda, it's one of my favorites. And this is a 4K resolution HDRI. And if I open this, you can see it's now inserted. 
and I click and drag the color into the color node of the background and if we jump back into layout we can now see the background HDRI is taking effect and it's really brightened up our scene very nicely and of course you don't want to be able to see the image when it comes to rendering so just make sure that in your render properties tab here come down to film and enable transparent so that we have a nice transparent background for our scene here. And moving on to my third tip for today is to experiment with your render settings. And so you'll find that in this little tab over here under the render properties, and it can seem quite intimidating at first. It looks like there's a lot to work with, but if I'm honest with you, there's only a couple of options I really tend to play around with in most of my scenes. So first there is the general ambient occlusion. This is really handy if you're working in EV and what it does, if we just tick the little option here, you can see it really adds some more depth to those shadows. And if you're not seeing it take effect, what I'd recommend is coming into your into the options for ambient occlusion and then turning your distance all the way down to zero so that right now it's not taking any effect. And then while holding shift, Click and drag your distance value up slowly just to see the shadows start to creep in and then you can get a good eye for where this is really taking effect in your design because it will depend on the general scale and you know what it is that you actually modeled. But in this example, I think I'm going to go with around 2.8. Yep, I think that looks pretty good. Now you can see we've got this extra bit of definition in the groin area perhaps in the inner arms here and under the beard and it just adds that little bit of extra depth which I really like. Then there's screen space reflections and to put it simply this basically enables the reflections from where the light is bouncing off objects within your scene. Uh, so for example you can see the color of the shirt here in my character's facial here. So depending on what sort of look you're going for, you may want to enable this. I think it adds a bit of a cool plastic look to my model here, so I'm going to enable this. Next up is the film. So as you saw earlier, I like to put this on transparent so that we don't get those HDRIs in the background and that we can render these then as PNG with nice clear backgrounds to use in our projects. And then lastly, one of my favorite options is color management. Now the only option in here that I tend to think about really is the look. And now initially you might think it looks quite pretty but I think the colours look a bit washed out, everything looks a bit gloomy. So in our colour management we can actually adjust the colour contrast to achieve a different type of look. And especially when I'm working with websites or perhaps applications, I'd like my colors to be really bright and vibrant. Otherwise, I find they just don't stand out very well amongst the other components of the user interface. So what I tend to go for is either a medium or a high contrast. And you can really see now where this really adds more depth to those colors, makes them a lot more bright and vibrant and just makes the design look a bit more higher quality. And my last tip for you today is to turn on cycles and be patient. If you've never used it before, you simply come into your render properties once again and in the render engine dropdown, click on cycles to enable cycles there. Cycles is another render engine in Blender which will create more accurate real world lighting. So essentially it's going to be a lot prettier than Eevee but the downside being it's going to take a lot longer to render your image. So I wouldn't recommend this if you're trying to create an animation but for a still render or just like a basic image, if you want the best results possible, start using cycles in your render, pop the kettle on and make yourself a coffee or tea and come back when it's done. Oh, and just make sure that you are using your GPU to render this if you have one. Now there's only one thing left for us to do today and that's to hit F12 or come up to render and render image and let's see how this thing turned out. And there we have today's finished rendered character. And that's gonna just about do for today's video but I hope this has answered a lot of the questions that I've been getting lately. But if there's anything you still don't quite understand, feel free to leave me a comment below. A big thank you as always to my amazing Patreons. You guys are fantastic and the support really blows me away but on that note if you enjoyed a like is very much appreciated but as always enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one